In the Milky Way alone, there are thought to be 100 billion planets. Of these, 30 million are thought to exist in Goldilocks zones that are just the right distance away from their suns to support life, while also containing the right mix of chemical elements that life like ours can arise from. In all the 13 billion years of the universe's existence, if just a tiny fraction, if just 1% of these went on to become civilizations capable of reaching out into the cosmos, then we should be seeing signs of thousands, if not millions of alien races running across our galaxy. And so, in the words of Nobel Prize winning physicist Enrico Fermi, in his famous Fermi Paradox, where is everyone? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Today we will be exploring some of the possible answers to this question, because although we don't know for certain whether aliens exist, there are actually some surprising barriers that might stop us from seeing them even if they do. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room. Maybe there's no one to see. In our last video, we explored the possible odds of alien life existing and found that if it was true that it's quite difficult for life to arise from non-living materials, or if it's unlikely that life would go on to become intelligent as we have done, then it's entirely possible that there would be no ships or signals in the sky simply because there are no aliens. We would be the first ones to ever make it this far. All other planets could be empty and desolate. It would then be our opportunity to spread out across the universe and discover all these empty rocks and the only life we'd ever encounter is whatever we brought with us from Earth. While this is a perfectly reasonable possibility, there is no conclusive evidence to prove it wrong, this is not the only explanation that exists for why the sky isn't full of signals. We should also be aware that we are constrained by a surprising natural limitation. For us to discover or make contact with an alien civilization, one of two things needs to happen. Either we need to send out a message to an alien civilization and then have them send a message back to us, or the alien civilization needs to have made the first overture, messaging us directly. There are different ways of doing this. For instance, we might be sending spaceships to each other, or we may be using unmanned probes. But there are significant issues with doing anything other than sending messages. Sending a spaceship is a tricky business. At the current speeds our spaceships are capable of, it will take potentially millions of years for an astronaut to reach their destination. The Voyager 2 probe took about 49 years to even leave our heliosphere. The nearest star is 4 light years away. In other words, it would take over 81,000 years to get even there, or about 2,700 human generations. And that's assuming that we have aliens as our closest next door neighbours. Even if we make allowances for technology to improve, it takes colossal energy to accelerate an object up to light speeds. Actually, it would take more energy than exists in the universe, for reasons we won't get into here. Mass just does not like to travel at those speeds. So, unless we or our alien friends are able to come up with some kind of workaround, most likely the easiest way to communicate with other civilizations is to send them radio signals. In fairness, it's not implausible that this speed cap will one day be broken. Scientists have hypothesized some promising things involving moving the space around you in warp bubbles rather than by moving yourself directly. The speed of light limit only applies to movement within a local area. So if it's your local area that's moving, you're fine. We actually have examples of this in nature around black holes, which I explore in one of my other videos. But until that becomes a scientific reality, let's just go with the fact that it's much easier to call than to visit in person. It's significantly easier and cheaper to send out light or radio waves, as simple as turning on a sufficiently large light bulb. 
So, let's assume that this is how our first contact with aliens will occur. Even here, however, we hit a roadblock. Radio signals and light are more than capable of traveling at relativistic speeds. It's called the speed of light for a reason, after all. However, that's its limit, light speed. Just less than 300 million meters per second. No signal can go faster than that, and this in turn limits how far we are able to see through space. Any signal from us would need to travel out across space before reaching alien life, and then, even if they decide to respond immediately, their response would need to travel all the way back, if they decided to respond. Let's imagine that happens though. We only invented the radio in the mid-1890s, so we have not really been able to do this for very long. As such, we would only be able to exchange a message with aliens who lived at most 60 light years away from us. 60 years for a signal sent out in 1900 to reach the alien civilization, and 60 years for it to come back. Our galaxy is roughly 100,000 light years across, so the 60 year light bubble we have we could have communicated with is truly tiny. In fairness, this limitation goes away if the aliens contact us first. After all, we are now receiving light in the James Webb Telescope that has been traveling for 13 billion years, from nearly the beginning of the universe. If an alien civilization came into being around 2 billion years ago, and they've kept existing since then, that means they now have a 2 billion light year bubble from which we could technically see them. A 10 billion year old civilization now has a 10 billion light year bubble. But if they were 10 billion light years away and only 9 billion years old, they would be completely invisible to us. Assuming that such far away aliens exist, why aren't we seeing any of them? Where are their signals? Well, this line of thought may rest on a faulty assumption, that there haven't been any signals coming in from the stars. There have been signals, we're just not sure what they are. Let's explore this with a fascinating example. In 1961, in their pursuit of evidence for the existence of alien life, which is worth noting because it opens up the possibility of confirmation bias, researchers at the Ohio State University finished work on a specialized telescope called Big Ear. It was the size of three football pitches, and worked on a similar basis to modern day telescopes, in that it captured signals using its large mirror on one end, and bounced them through smaller mirrors on the other into two receivers in the center, where the results were then processed. You may notice that these capture dishes are just wireframes though, not true mirrors. This is because Big Ear was a radio telescope, it wasn't trying to see with visible light. The way Big Ear worked meant that it was more limited in its motion than a telescope that could rotate in any direction. Big Ear could only tilt its primary reflector up and down, which meant that it was somewhat limited to only listening to a point in a narrow strip of space at any one time. This was cheaper and easier to design, and the designers had an idea that would let them get around Big Ear's limitations. They built Big Ear at just the right orientation, so that the rotation of the planet would be what turned it left and right. With the Earth turning it one way, and with its tiltable reflector adjusting it along the other axis, you could point Big Ear towards any point in the sky if you have enough patience. Quite a clever solution. Big Ear's direction of attention would sweep around the night sky in large, circular arcs listening out to try to spot any unusual signals that we did not have a natural explanation for. And sure enough, in 1977, Big Ear found something. On the 15th of August, a 72 second long pulse of radio waves came in that were 30 times more powerful than anything Big Ear had heard before in the background chatter of the universe. It was so out of the ordinary that the researcher who found it wrote WOW on the computer printout when they saw it, giving it the historical name of the WOW signal. It was incredibly uniform. 
it rose in intensity, peaked, and then dropped back down in a smooth motion instead of the erratic fluctuations you might have expected from cosmic radiation. This indicated that whatever had made the sound was broadcasting consistently, kind of like the beam of a lighthouse sweeping out across the stars, with us turning to look at it and then turning away again. Except it wasn't consistent. Due to Big Ear's design, researchers had to wait a few minutes before the second ear of Big Ear moved to look at that particular patch of space the wow signal had come from. And when they got there, the signal had vanished. Ever since then, despite checking back in from time to time, we have never heard another wow signal come from that region of space to this day. So what was it? A fault in the machinery of Big Ear? A passing comet that threw out a momentary burst of signals? Or an alien civilization trying to communicate? The fact of the matter is, we don't know. It's possible that the wow signal has a perfectly natural explanation. After all, when the regular, consistent pulses of X-rays from pulsars were first discovered, some people thought that they were aliens trying to communicate before the real explanation was found. Maybe we will one day find another wow signal, and we'll see that it was nothing alien in origin at all. But there's a technical point that needs to be made here. If I were the scientist in charge, I would point my telescope at the point in the sky that the wow signal came from, and would wait to see if anything else came from there. If I didn't, another signal might come in and I'd miss it. But consider the way Big Ear was constructed. It rotates only within the rotation of the Earth. It physically can't stay looking at the same place for more than a few moments. As such, we have no idea whether more signals came in from that region of space or not. Hundreds could have come in over the next several hours, including an entire orchestra performance. But as Big Ear wasn't listening in that direction for more than a moment in the day, it would have only heard a single note. This highlights a conscious decision on the part of organizations like SETI, who are seeking intelligent life in the universe. Because resources are limited, and space is vast, they lack the time and funding to take a telescope and point it for potentially decades on end at a single place, just to see if aliens want to talk to us again from that spot. Instead, they favor broad sweeps of space to cover as much ground as possible, hoping to get a lucky hit. If they were fishing, rather than leaving their line in the water at a single point, they are casting and casting, seeing if anything bites immediately, and moving on if nothing does. This approach is more reasonable than my analogy makes it sound, as aliens are not fish to be attracted to a lure, or scared off by a splash of a telescope looking at them. And although the first process is more methodical, there's every chance that if you just sweep your telescope across the sky, you will encounter some evidence or signal. The problem comes with the follow-up. There have actually been numerous signals like the WOW signal that radio telescopes have picked up over the years. Strange and unusual bursts that we have no current explanation for. But because we aren't focusing on them and thoroughly following up over years of continued, dedicated study, we are missing a lot of information. And as a result, we end up with weaker conclusions. Which brings us to our conclusion. Perhaps we are seeing no aliens simply because of our method. Of course, these are just a few of many possible theories. For this video, I've tried to focus on some of the technical limitations to finding signs of alien life. However, there are other, more theory-based explanations that lean more on speculation. They are fascinating though, and give us interesting insights into our own civilization. So if you've enjoyed this subject, then I'll go into them in another video. Do you think there are aliens up in the night sky? If so, why do you think they've not spoken to us? Be sure to leave your ideas in the comments below. If you remember, a little while back I partnered with Omaze to offer you the chance to win a Tesla S Apex Plaid and support a great cause, the Juju Initiative. Here's the last reminder because the time is ticking for you to enter. The good news is that my link is still active in the description below. Go to amaze.com forward slash astrum to enter for your chance to win. 
And as an added bonus, use the code ASTRUM100 for 100 extra entries. The final day to enter is the 2nd of September. Thanks for watching. Do you find value in these videos and want to support the channel, plus have your name added to this list? Check the links in the description below. Thanks to those of you that do already, I really appreciate it. All the best and see you next time.